What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Wednesday, August 28th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, renewables accounted for 14.6 of global energy consumption in 2023. Next up, visualizing the renewable energy landscape across G20 countries flipping back over to fossil fuels norway natural gas exports surge in 2024 flying over to new zealand they reverse ban on offshore oil and gas exploration interesting and finally we'll come back at home u.s oil dominance hinges on the quiet corner of new mexico specifically two specific counties in there so we'll do that i will then quickly cover what happened in the oil and gas markets today and we will talk a little bit about spot lng shipping rates they are on the downfall as always guys i am michael tanner joined by Stuart turley where do you want to begin? Hey, let's start with our buddies there. And the renewable accounted for 14.6 of global energy consumption in 2023. Michael, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that renewables is a marketing term for renewable energy that is not renewable nor sustainable without subsidies. So let's just get ready to rumble into this. The wind and solar consumption reached 14.6 in 2023. China led the world in renewable energy production and capacity add-ons. China just led the world in coal, <laughs> LNG. I mean, they did everything. So I think that that was pretty funny. But look at this chart. Miss Producer, if you could bring this chart up, that chart is a hockey stick. I mean, that thing is like starting in 2009 to 2023. It is nuts. 346 gigawatts of new capacity smashing the 2022 record of 67 percent china contributed quarter on quarter growth europe made significant strides at 56 gigawatts of solar holy smokes batman yeah i mean i think people would say oh 14.6 that's not that much it's probably what it should be is the funny part well, it's the cost that we're not talking about. When we sit back and take a look, we put out all at 14.6% of the energy mix. How much did that 14.6 cost? Oh, I well, bet absolutely. The- I, I say this with oil production. It's not how much oil a well produces. It's how much you paid to go get that. Exactly. So when we sit back and take a look, this is going to lead into this next one. Let's go to the visualizing renewable energy landscape around the G20 countries. This is not a bad little chart. And you take a look, oh, Brazil's leading the way in 30% of their electricity. Yay. But guess what? The U.S. is right in there. Let's take a look. France is at 14%. Japan's at 12%. The U.S. is at 16 And the majority of the G20 economies are at least five years past their peak power sector emissions. So when you take a look at this, okay, we can say that we're increasing our renewables. But again, it's a marketing term. They're not renewable, nor are they sustainable without subsidies. Well, I mean, we knew that. If we can go ahead and throw this chart up here, how the G20 generates its electricity. I mean, it's, as you can see, it's mostly, you know, look at Brazil with all that hydro. Brazil, Germany, UK, you'd fit in well there. Oh, yeah. Love me some hydro. But but you notice I got a microgrid besides my hydro. I got solar. I got wind. I got it all. The story will get out there no matter what happens. 60%. From hydro. Good for Brazil. Good for Brazil. And and Norway has got the same thing. They've got lots of hydro, but now they are not able to export their electricity because they've had a drought. I also love that Canada only is 7% wind and solar. Aren't they... Isn't Trudeau trying to shove that down everyone's throat? Oh, nope, it is. It's not and, working. And Alberta is absolutely miserable because of what they're doing to them. So... 
Hey, let's head over to Norway. Speaking of Norway, Norway's natural gas exports surge in 2024. Michael, you and I have been podcasting for four years. Do you remember about three years ago, we were talking about it was we you and I were early to the story that Norway was going to shut down their their natural gas plants because of the renewable and the green space. Now, all of a sudden, they're like, yay, we love our natural gas. It is the gas export are soaring so much they're on track to challenge historical records with pipeline deliveries to Europe up 10% year on year. I'll tell you what, Europe would be dead meat without Norway's natural gas system. It's an 8,800 kilometer pipeline that supplies to Belgium, Britain, France, Germany, Denmark. Out in Norway with 95% of its gas delivered via pipelines. I love me some pipelines. But I'll tell you what, you're going to start seeing some stories, Michael, on the EU. Their energy department and their energy mix is a disaster. They are going to be having serious grid issues. In All I want to know is when are the Ukrainian seals coming after this export pipeline? They're next. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Not that I have anything. It, it is interesting, though, Norway, who's been kind of you know, been on the forefront of trying to, hey, we're going to shut down oil and gas. We're going to move renewable is now bending the need to massive natural gas exports. Not like as we'll cover, you know, gas prices are necessarily high. They are actually over in Europe. So you have to remember regional dynamics there. But, you know, they're they're going all into it. And speaking of somebody going all in New Zealand. They're Isn't back. that crazy? New Zealand, the next story, New Zealand to reverse ban on offshore oil and gas exploration. I found this absolutely nuts. New Zealand's natural gas production dropped by 12.5 in 2023 and a further 27.8 for the first three months of this year, creating a nationwide shortage, according to government estimates. New Zealand, quote, is currently an energy shortage. The lakes are low, the sun hasn't been shining, and the wind hasn't been blowing, and we have an inadequate supply of natural gas to meet demand. Holy smokes, Batman. Talk about bad planning. Holy smokes. The weatherman can't coordinate with the natural gas man. What's going on? I mean, it, this is what happens when the government get involved, gets involved with the free market. You get decisions like this. You get the swang of decisions when if they had just let continued exploration this whole time, they would have, one, had a much more significant supply at home, wouldn't have necessarily caused all this issue. You know, easing restrictions on electrical lines for companies owning generation. I mean, it's who would want to live there? I mean, I get, I get it's pretty, but why would you want to live there? If you ever seen The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, yeah. then holy smokes, I would love to go see Hobbit Hobbitville and go do a tour, get a helicopter where Aragorn was being, you know, fighting with Gandalf in the end. I'd want to go see all that. Do I want to live there? Hell no. No, because you'd have to ride a yak to get there because there's no <laughs> gas. But all right, let's go to the next one here. U.S. oil dominance hinges on a quiet corner of New Mexico. I did not even get this story until I started reading into it. And I'm like, whoa, data shows that two New Mexico counties accounted for 17% of on offshore oil output in the contiguous US last year before the next decade they're expected to pump more than in oil than the next five biggest countries combined let me say that again the next five biggest countries combined those two little ones holy smokes there's some tax revenue coming out of that group yeah, absolutely. I mean, Lee and Eddy County, New Mexico, are are definitely becoming the two most significant counties in the United States. It's also why I think you saw the fe and a lot of that's federal land. So going back to an article we talked about a few months ago, that raising right. federal rates, not necessarily above standards elsewhere, but just to right size it with elsewhere. It's actually critical. It's going to provide a lot of decent, decent revenue to the country or, or to that state specifically. I mean, it's pretty crazy that you're talking about they're more significant than most countries when it comes to natural gas. I mean, the Delaware oh. Basin is slowly outpacing the Midland and Michael, Basin yeah, guy. you look at that map, and Miss Producer, if you could bring that map up for just a brief, Leah and Eddy County. 
Take a look at Loving Rees Midland. I mean, that is an area I've been out there in the field and, you know, attaching some rigs and things out there. It's it's pretty flat yeah. country. <laughs> I mean, Lee, Eddy, and Loving County are all just right there down in, the, you know, lower southeast New Mexico in the panhandle of Texas right there. Pretty unbelievable. Oh, it is. That's some great, great land. I had a time, good- oh, my goodness. I'd be buying some rights there. Well, I, I don't think you can, unfortunately, get get uh, mineral rights down there. They're all bought, purchased up, unfortunately. Well, that's why I said if I had a time machine. Oh, oh yeah. Well, yeah, if I had a time machine, I'd just go bought all of Midland for five bucks, but not yeah. anymore. No. Hey, off to you now. And by the way, a shout out to our great oil and gas hands out there. They yes. we still deliver the, the cleanest oil and gas, low yep. cost energy in the world. Great job, guys. No, absolutely. We really appreciate everybody. I mean, I don't think that the guys out in the field get enough credit. So we, as really always, don't. appreciate what you guys do. Let's go ahead and jump over and talk finances real quick, guys. Before we do that, as always, the news and quote-unquote analysis that you just heard is brought to you by World's Greatest Website, www.energynewsbeat.com. The best place for all your energy and oil and gas news. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business. Hit the description below for all links to the timestamps, all the links to the articles, links to all of our favorite stuff. And as mentioned in the intro, if you want to check out our latest oil and gas project, we are teaming up with Pecos Country Operating and Crew Truth. Hit that description below or go to investinoil.energynewsbeat.com. That's investinoil.energynewsbeat.com. But let's go ahead and move over. I mean, overall markets, I mean, we're actually recording this a little early, earlier in the day on, 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 on Tuesday here, Stu. So markets still open, but we're up. Fairly flat on the day. S and P five hundred up about two tenths of a percentage point. Nasdaq up three tenths of a percentage point. Two year yields down about a full percentage point. Ten year yields actually up about a tenth of a percentage point. Dollar index falls about three quarter or about a third of a percentage point. Uh, Bitcoin still above sixty thousand, about sixty two thousand even right now, but it's down about one point three percentage points for the day. Uh, crude oil not having a great day down 2.3 percentage points, currently sitting about 75.62. Brent oil down a half a percentage point, falling below that $80 mark, 77 or 79.79. Natural gas down another 2.8 percentage points, $1.90. Yikes there. I mean, biggest thing on prices right now is 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 a combination of what's going on in the Middle East. Obviously, what saw that huge, you know, that huge run up of prices to 77, 78. Yet yeah, the last two days was mainly due to some Middle East conflicts. It looks like those retaliatory strikes have, you know, obviously were priced in. It doesn't look like, or the hope is, it's not going to lead to a larger conflict but again you never know there you know i think people are also out there you know ironically what's <laughs> going to happen with what the federal reserve is going to do from a monetary <clears throat> easing standpoint we did obviously hear on friday the fact that drone powell is going to go ahead and most likely start cutting rates could be super interesting there we will see at the end of the week u.s inflation data we also did see gold trade above 2500 dollars which is you know even on that expectation of a rate cut which injuring natural gas continues to get pounded you know i think the the dynamics of what you're seeing here at home on natural gas prices are different than what you're seeing obviously than what we covered in europe they can't get enough natural gas there we here at home we've got too much natural gas for the pipeline capacity that we've got waha which is the spot price down in the permian is has been consistently trading below zero dollars never good talk about you know if, if there is something to do you know if environmentalists understood that if gas can't get put in a pipeline it gets flared they'd probably be more into pipelines and maybe want to fund pipelines in order to save the environment because we can all admit flaring's not great whether you know no matter what side and anytime you see a flare going off it's either a new drill which is fine but also think about there's no export or takeaway capacity and that's just a poor planning part oh absolutely and and the eia the politically motivated eia has even said The only reason we've really hit our net zero goals in the U.S. is because we've replaced our coal plants with natural gas. Love our natural gas for electrical production. Yep. Let's jump over here quickly. Spot LNG shipping rates and European prices continue to drop. So 
speaking of exactly what we're talking about, that regional difference between what's going on in the United States with natural gas and what's going on abroad. This was super interesting. Both Pacific and Atlantic LNG shipping units have experienced a massive decline. This is according to Spark's commercial analyst, Kasim Afghan. Spark 30's Atlantic rates experienced a second week-on-week decrease falling by $8,250 to a total of $61,500 per day, which was pretty crazy. That was up over a hundred thousand earlier last year. He said it's almost the it's the largest week on week decrease in over a month and marks almost a fifteen thousand dollar decline in the Atlantic rates over the last two weeks. You know, early in September, October of twenty twenty three, rates were almost at two hundred thousand a day, a little about one hundred and eighty thousand. So we've almost seen a hundred percent drop in those prices. You know, the the front month delivery is Eleven dollars and seventy-seven cents for liquid LNG on an MMBTU basis. So wow. if you can get your LNG to Europe, you'll get paid a decent amount too. It's why the export capacity is so big. And why why do you think they want to try to build LNG facilities here? Because it ain't worth nothing here, but it's definitely worth something over in Europe. It's it's pretty unbelievable. Gas storages sitting over in the EU is about eighty-eight point four seven percent as of August fourteenth, and as and of and that you know, corresponds with 91.56% full, basically a year prior to that. Pretty unbelievable. In Asia, the LNG cargoes settling for October, $13.75. That's on an MMBTU basis. Pretty unbelievable. Front month, JKM, which is their spot natural gas. You're on 1446, So Pretty unbelievable. Last quote I'll read, quote, Chinese buyers are now predominantly cautious and remain in wait and see mode regarding winter cargo procurement doesn't matter those are still great prices so gives you you know if you're a you're a u.s natural gas trader i'm sorry things have been tough for you maybe you try moving to amsterdam yeah or start selling lng if if you can get it over there it'd be great so all right Stu, what else should people be worried about I'll tell you what, I just want to give a shout out to Mark Zuckerberg for coming clean and admitting that he was pressured by the Biden administration to shut down the Hunter laptop as well as the disinformation on there and the influencing of the election. So hats off to him to admitting that election fraud was happening in 2020. So. Yeah. You know, would not have I guessed want- Mark Zuckerberg, but you we've been slowly seeing him get red pilled over the past year two years now so when he, uh, when a billionaire is riding on a wave in a tux going T- trump's cool i'm a little weirded out <laughs> maybe we'll get back on facebook because of that but all right guys with that we're gonna let you get out of here get back to work appreciate you guys checking us out here on the world's greatest podcast for Stuart turley i'm michael tanner we'll see you tomorrow folks 